Hello, welcome to another Skyrim mod update video and today we have 5 more brand new mods to cover on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I didn't have an upload yesterday so there are some mods to catch up on but they will all be covered eventually. Anyway, I don't see a reason to wait around, let's jump into the first one today starting with the Potion of Blood Creation and Dispel Self. What does the mod do? Well, according to the mod author, several things. First, the mod allows you to create a potion of blood at the cooking pot with one human heart or two human flesh. So at the cooking pot, I did exactly that, and you can see there it is craftable once you get yourself the required ingredients. For its effect, well, it's a potion for vampires who don't want to feed on humans, and heals 100 health to vampires. One thing the mod author wants you to know is that this mod doesn't provide heart and flesh drops. You can still only get them the regular ways, but there are other mods which will give you more of them as potential loot drops from NPCs. On top of this, the mod also allows you to go to the forge with a filled petty soul gem and create a spell tomb of Dispel Self. It's a new restoration spell essentially allowing you to dispel your own spells, so stop an active magic effect or cancel a conjuration and that kind of thing. A very necessary spell can come in useful for many different things and it is considered restoration to stop NPCs freaking out when you use it. And you can see again in the video the spell does in fact work, I have a conjure beast and I get rid of him with the Dispel self spell and I also use it to get rid of the invisibility spell which I cast so it's definitely two very useful mods for you to download. Our next mod is the improved spellbreaker ward. The spellbreaker is of course a shield you get from Perii after completing their Daedric quest. The shield is unique in its effect which casts 50 resistance to magic with its ward and of course the ward only protects against magic with the shield it doesn't provide any armor rating unlike most wards. The effect refreshes itself every second that the user is blocking as well although it does take a small amount of time to charge up and the effect will remain active after blocking is ceased as well so none of that stuff changes it all still does the same the one thing that does change is the ward resist magic amount and before it was 50 points but with this mod that has been improved and the reason for this is you might find the shield becomes less and less effective as you level up as spell using enemies start to become more powerful eventually the ward spell is going to shatter with one hit staggering you and it's not really worth using over a regular shield. Now you should be able to use the shield for much longer as it's been increased to 120 damage resistance for magic. Of course it will be a bit overpowered if you get it at lower levels but it is in fact a Daedric artifact so I don't have a problem with it being powerful. The next mod is a very simple one. All it does is tries to improve the look of the enchantment effects on your weapons and effects on enemies once hit. The mod just alters the shade to be more vibrant and higher contrast than vanilla and of course is on PS4 so the changes are very limited to in-game assets but I still think it's an improvement from the vanilla game. Our fourth mod of today is called Better Dynamic Snow and it's another improvement mod to a texture in-game. The mod replaces the default snow shader with a dynamic shader instead and the dynamic shader uses the installed snow texture for the shader instead of the vertex colors like the vanilla one will use. About 80% of all snowy objects will use the new dynamic dynamic snow shader rather than the vanilla one. The other 20% can be used as a snow texture due to an engine limitation that doesn't allow textures with transparency to also display a texture for the shader, but you will still see an improvement to most snow across the game. The biggest difference in the snow you will notice is the snow which lies on objects like on trees and rocks for example, which will be improved and will be much fluffier looking than it was in vanilla Skyrim. So it looks like snow has just fallen and it's definitely an improvement. The same kind of effect will also be applied to other places. You simply see a flat white texture for snow such as on the ground around Windhelm. It's now much more realistic looking than it was before and it really does improve the immersion of all the snowy regions across Skyrim. Our final mod is the Barbarian Steel Armor mod. The Barbarian Steel Armor mod adds a standalone set of craftable light armor to Skyrim. The armor will work for any race, male or female, and is fully weight slider compatible, so essentially it won't stretch if you change your body size. For a list of armor pieces, it includes the steel armor, the Barbarian Steel boots, the Barbarian Steel gauntlets, helmet, you also get the Barbarian hood, so you can only equip the helmet or the hood, and you also get a Barbarian fur cloak. The craftable fur cloak is added for extra protection and also to increase modesty as it is quite revealing the original armor without the cloak and you also get a choice of hood or helmet to fit your playstyle. To get it, well the set of barbarian steel armor can be crafted at the forge simply under the steel section so you will require the steel smithing perk to make it and the fur cloak is under hide. The armor stats are all between elven and thieves guild and of course they can be improved at the workbench and enchanted as well. And it's definitely a very nice armor mod. 
Well, that's about all for this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful. If you did, subscribe for daily useful guides and update videos, and I will see you all next time.